So today I want to talk about the difference between HDR and luminosity masks, but probably not in the way you might think. The obvious question, the question I hear a lot is, is it better to use high dynamic range software to blend multiple exposures, or is it better to use luminosity masks to manually blend multiple exposures? And we can have a great discussion on that. I'll be happy to show you why I think luminosity masks are so much better for that purpose, but that's not the video today. So if you want that video, leave a comment below. I'll be happy to make it in the future. This video is gonna be about all the things that HDR simply cannot do. Even if you couple HDR with a tool like Photoshop, you're missing out on enormous potential for all the other great things that luminosity selections can do because they're built from the image. They let you interactively reach out, grab a piece of the image, and change it in the way that you want to. So you have complete control with this, and it's not just about getting more beautiful skies or about expanding the dynamic range in your photograph. There's all these other great things you can do, and I'm gonna show a bunch of before and after examples in this video. In each case, you'll see a raw photo as it was shot, and then the final image after I processed it using my Lumenzia luminosity masking panel for Photoshop with luminosity masks and selections. Now, in addition to that, I'm not gonna talk about the specific ways that I edit these images, but a good half dozen of these, I've already created tutorials on how to create them. So at the end of the video, stick around, and I'll have links out to all the different tutorials so you can see how I created many of the images I used in this video. But let's first start with local adjustments. When you use HDR software, you're making a global adjustment to your image. You don't have local control. For example, a scene like this, this car that I shot out in the street, handheld, did not have a circular polarizer, got a lot of glare on the windshield. I've got this reflection and I want to remove it. Using a luminosity mask, it took about 10 seconds to remove it. And of course, I've done other things to this image, but just notice how that reflection is basically almost completely gone from the scene. Not 100%, but so close. You don't notice it anymore. It's a very convincing adjustment. Obviously not something you can do with HDR. Next up would be another video I, I showed previously where in the foreground of this shot, notice this shadow that's cast of my tripod and camera into the scene. It's a horrible issue. Obviously you can't do anything about this with HDR, but even in Photoshop, normally trying to clone this out would take hours of work because these tiles are have perspective. They're going to the image, so they're changing their shape throughout the image. So it would take a very long time to clone this out, but with some custom luminosity mass, I was able to select the shadow, change the color, change the brightness, and completely remove it, get this result here, where there's no cloning in this image whatsoever. And you can see this in the tutorial at the end, but you can just see that it was a very clean result and it was done much faster than using cloning and gave me this finished image here. Or we could talk about dodging and burning, which is another form of local adjustment where you make things lighter or darker. And so we have this scene here, we've got these beautiful lights. Obviously HDR software might help me recover some of the blown highlights on the stairwell, what it's not going to help me with too much is that pattern of dots in the background that makes this beautiful eye pattern. And by using the luminosity mass and selections here, I was able to also bring back that shape and really showcase the most important part of this image, which was that pattern of dots on the wall. Or we have this shot here of this sandstone that I shot out west. It was a very intimidating scene. Wanted it to feel very dramatic. Well, I wanted to dodge and burn it. Even in Photoshop, it would be a lot of work to do by hand because I want to separate the dark parts of these cracks from the lighter parts of the highlights. With a luminosity master selection, you can get this stunning finished result without a lot of effort. And then a shot like this of the Tokyo Sky Tree, where there's a number of different distractions. The dynamic range of the scene is not really a problem, but I want to simplify it and get to something that looks more like this. And luminosity masks help me make those targeted edits to make the tower really stand out and make everything else in the image help support that rather than be distracting in the scene. Now compositing is something that often with HDR software actually goes in the opposite direction. That is if you have things that are moving, you can get ghosting. For example, I've got this skyline shot of Chicago. I was able to capture the sun at the peak moment. And then I also wanted to bring in a boat to add a human element to the scene that boat was shot from a slightly different time. So even if that boat and that sky happened in the exact same moment and I tried to blend them with HDR, I probably would have ghosting or other issues. And if I tried to take that HDR and just use it as a filter and bring it over to Photoshop, 
I would still have problems trying to get the texture and color of the boat to match the scene. And if I got that right, I'd still have to figure out a way to blend the wake, those waves of the boat, into the reflection in a convincing way. And just simply painting it in as another layer in Photoshop, it's going to be very hard to make that look nice and natural. Sometimes the blending can be a little more straightforward, like this is another one of my tutorials on YouTube, where we have this wave and this wave and several other waves that I blend with a slightly different sky for the moment and created this finished image. So you can see the potential here of grabbing all these different elements and compositing them together. Another way we can use luminosity mass is not just to restore color, but to add color that might not quite be there in your raw file. And whether you do this or don't, or the amount you do it is totally up to your photographic ethics, but I've grabbed a couple of pretty extreme examples to show you what's possible. And whereas I've gone all the way to one extreme, you might only use 10% of the adjustment, but just know that you have the potential to add as much or little color as you want. For example, when adding sky color to a scene like this, that I unfortunately did not bring the right tripod, I could set up my tripod, and my buddy Josh was thankfully kind enough to loan me his, but by the time I was set up, I had missed the peak color. So even though there was a beautiful pink sunset, all I really got was this orange yellow glow below and a little bit of the pink. So I had to manually bring it back with luminosity mass and I restored it to this vibrant pink sky here, which it truly was a very pink sunset, but I don't have the raw that captured it. So I had to create it. Or for example, this shot of this tree that also by the time I shot it, the sky had fallen very flat and the light just was not quite where I wanted it using luminosity mass and selections was able to create a much more dramatic, much more colorful scene that I think captures the majesty of this tree. Or you can do a complete sky replacement for a number of different reasons. You might not have the sky you want. So a scene like this, you get this beautiful cave scene looking out onto a completely cloudless sky I wanted to bring back something that looked more like this by blending in some clouds from another exposure. Or a scene like this that also has a very flat dead sky and wanted to bring back something more interesting because what I brought in was not just the sky but the mountains behind it from another image to create more depth in this scene. And again, it's totally up to you what you want to use from this toolkit. I just want you to see what's possible. Another way to blend multiple different shots is to blend perspectives. For example, I had this shot of a lake. I found a nice foreground. It's not quite the foreground I need though. If you look at that tree on the right, it really blocks the image. So the rock looks great. The lake looks great. The sky looks great in the darker version of this exposure, but I needed to do something about that tree. Well, about five feet away was another set of rocks like this that didn't have that tree, but unfortunately they just weren't very nice looking rocks. It's all these small pebbles. So I wanted to take the best of these two different sh shots and blend them together to create this. So now I have that sense of looking off that cliff edge in a way that's just much more pleasing. It doesn't have that distracting tree that honestly I didn't notice until I looked at that photograph and blending these two different perspectives created a much more interesting scene. Or finally, you can even blend focal length. For example, I had this shot of a haystack rock out in Oregon. The rock is just barely big enough to make the scene interesting, but at 35 millimeters, the foreground just doesn't have the streaking water that I wanted. At 19 millimeters, I get this beautiful foreground. The, the little foam bubbles are streaking through, creating these nice white streaks that lead the viewer's eye out into the scene. But it means that the haystack rock in the distance is just too small and it just loses the, the beauty of the scene, well, we can blend them together in order to create this finished scene. And just blending that haystack rock on top wasn't that much work, but notice in the before image here, that shadow is very small. So I had to create a shadow and then blend it into the shadows between those white peaks of the waves without luminosity selections. I just couldn't do this in a convincing way. So obviously luminosity maps are about so much more than just manually blending exposures. And I encourage you to click on the different tutorial links I have so you can see how I created many of the different images you've just seen